Um, but I wanted to start off with a little bit of Man United. It's kind of Man United versus Chelsea a little bit. Today, Fabrizio has essentially said Elise is going to join either Chelsea or Manchester United. George, where, where do you see him going? Do you know what? Under the current climate, I think that he's probably best placed. Oh, to be fair, I don't think he's best placed at either clubs. But I, I think if he's going to choose between the two, I think it probably will be Man United. Um, although Chelsea um, are a decent proposition, and of course they they have a, a young squad that he'd probably fit in with the culture. I just don't think that he's going to see the vision to pro, I mean, progress at Chelsea. We, we've seen so many young players go to Chelsea as well as Man United, but Chelsea as of recently, that they've packed out their squad with a lot of players and it, it has gone wrong, essentially, with quite a lot of those players. It, it's not, it, it has gone wrong. They're, they've not been performing to the levels needed. You don't really know whether they're going to keep their manager when he does, when they eventually choose which manager they end. I think they're in, was it four or five managers in the last three years? Um, yeah. They're, they're literally just, it's, everyone thought Chelsea's models changed. We was told when Todd Bowley come in, it was all about rebuilding and giving managers time and so on. But th that's not the case. At least with Manchester United, you can see the new ownership actually wants to set the president that this is going to be uh, uh, a rebuild. This is going to be a few years to get back to the level they need. But I think Manchester United have a bit more clearer vision of what they want to do with the club. So for me, I think Elise is definitely going to look at the opportunity to go play for Man United, play for the big club, potentially, you know, take that position of where Sancho was and and take that big move, you know, and, and all of the the number seven, everything that came with that Sancho move. I think Elise is going to want to be that yeah. guy that takes that over and, Sets it right because let's be honest here, Lise is a top, top quality player. I mean, if you look at just his goals and assists, and he's been injured pretty much half of the season he was out. But every time he'd come back, the performances never faltered. Like he he went straight back to the level that he had prior to the injury. So I, I think Manchester United's a better move. Although there's there's questions over both. I definitely think it's um a much better move than Chelsea. Uh, how do you see it, David? You know, it's another youngster, but maybe a youngster with a little bit more experience than normal. You know, he had, I, I would, what's he got? He's got to play between 100 to 200 games in his professional career already. So there is some experience that comes along with him. Are you confident that Chelsea can get this over the line? Or do you feel that you need more experience and you'd rather spend the money there? I personally would rather more experience, but my owners aren't going to do that. So there's no point in me asking for it. Um, so I think... What's going to happen is he's got a release clause and Chelsea will just pay over the odds as we've done. That's what I think is going to happen because we just we will pay over the odds. We'll have, get more favourable amortisations and whatever and all the financial stuff. And I just think it, I just think it works out better for us. I think United, I think the guy is a special player. Whoever gets him, and I, I don't, I'm, again, he's one of these players when you look at them and go like, I don't think it really matters what system you're in. As long as we get you in the right position, you're going to create chances or you're going to score goals. I don't think it really matters which, which team he goes for because he's a player who will back himself no matter where he goes. I personally would love him at Chelsea. Where he fits in, it, it will create a, like it will create overcrowding because we have so many young forwards anyway. But for me, if he was to come in, he'd arguably, apart from Cole yeah. Palmer, he'd be the best one. Um, at United, I think he'd be great as well. Really good player. I don't... I don't any forward better than him? He's better than Gonacho. He's better than Anthony. He's better than all your forwards, pretty much. So. Well, he, he's, I mean, he's better than everybody that we have on the right hand side right now. Um, he just is. Ahmad has looked nice and, and he's looked tidy in the last few games, but he's definitely better than what we've got. How, how do you see it, Will? I mean, he, he looks like he's really, he looks like he's going to leave Crystal Palace. Fabrizio's, you know, pretty clued up and has said it's going to be either one of those two clubs. If you were advising Elise, both clubs are not in the best of positions right now, but United are starting off afresh this summer with probably a new manager, a new board, new regime. Chelsea kind of still been doing it two years and haven't really kicked on. Where would you advise Elise to join? Yeah, stay at Palace and wait for a bigger club to come in. <laughs> that's what I would tell him. But, I mean, looking at those two clubs, that's a, that's kind of like the main options for him. I think May United makes a bit more sense because I think he automatically goes there and starts. He'd be the best winger at your club, even though – 
I don't really know, you know, what you guys are going to do with your manager. I, I'm seeing reports that Ten Hag might leave. They're saying that he might stay. It's a bunch of conflicting things that are going on right now, which is why I would tell him not to go there. But then also, if you look at Chelsea, uh, he occupies the same spaces that Cole Palmer does. He plays on that right side. That's primarily where Cole Palmer plays. So then what happens with those two now? And even though I do think that Chelsea are going to be in a much better situation to start off next season than Man United are, I just think, you know, it, you know, United are a bigger club. And I think he starts from day one um, at Manchester United. But I don't really think either of these clubs uh, he should go to because technical players, they go to Man United and they just die. Very similar profile to Jadon Sancho, kind of like the same qualities that they have. And especially if you keep Ten Hag, you're going to go by Olise to chase the ball for what, 60% of the game and then hoof it down the field to Rashford or Garnacho. He's not going to, it's not going to work. So, I mean, kind of sucks. It's, you make, no, you make a great point. You're sorry, Will, you know, make a great point there. And I think yeah. that for Man United, I think we're a better choice for him and a more sensible choice for him. As and when we know what we're doing. And what I mean by that is if Ten Hag goes and it's, Let's just say it's De Zerbi that's coming in. You know that's someone that's going to be able to work with technical footballers. If we make a sort of public statement that we are looking, you know, to move forward and improve our football, then I think we're a great sell. Because as much as the last 10 years we've ruined people, as much as the last 10 years we haven't progressed, you can literally put up a sign that says under new management. And it legitimately will be. It, you can say, look, everything that's happened in the past is gone now. We're clearing all these people out. These board, the board of directors are gone. These scouts are gone. The medical team is out. The manager and coaching staff are gone. It's a fresh start. The way players have behaved isn't going to happen now. You can sell that. Now, maybe not everyone will believe it. Not everybody will buy it straight away. But it literally is new people talking to you. As opposed to Ed Woodward or Richard Arnold saying, oh, we've changed. I promise you this. To, you know, you know, like that guy in his vest who's drunk saying to his wife, I've changed. I've changed. I'm, I'm a different man now. It's not the same story. With Chelsea, the one thing I, you know, if I was trying to sell Man United to him, I'd be saying, look, Chelsea are going to tell you they're, they're at the beginning of a new dawn, but this is their fourth new dawn in two years. That's what Man United were doing. So they're kind of doing what Man United w w were doing under Ed Woodward. I think he could go to either. I, I, I'm not trying to pr pretend and say that there's no chance he goes to Chelsea, but Man United, I think, have got to lean on the fact that it's going to be a fresh start. I don't see Ten Hag staying personally. I, I do think he'll move on. And I think we'll end up with a manager that we're all pretty happy with. I really do. And look, I'd love Elise say at Man United. I think he's, again, a very highly technical footballer. I think we need someone who's creative like him. But I've also just looked at what you've said while you, while you said it. Looking at the heat maps, and I think heat maps tell you more about a player's position than the starting graphic on the, on the sports channels. And yeah. his heat map and Cole Palmer's heat map are almost identical. Yeah, it's like they yeah. occupy the same yeah. spaces. Like, you know, like they could both play in midfield. They could both play on like that right. But they primarily do their damage on the right. And I think it's always kind of idiotic to buy players and then you play them out of position because what made you want to buy them is what you saw them do on this side of the pitch. So now why would you move him? And on top of that, Chelsea, um, you know, I think Elise's qualities is more of like a creator. He's not necessarily somebody that's going to go there and score 20 goals. I mean, you, you never know, but realistically, he's probably not. So Chelsea needs to worry about signing a striker. That's who you need to be paying over the odds for, not another player that's going to be creating chances for Nicholas Jackson to just miss. Um, and if you look at Man United, none of their wingers are really that creative as well. I mean, like Garnacho, head down, uh, cuts inside. Uh, same thing with Marcus Rashford. And they do need a player of uh, Michael Olise. Just I, I don't know if it's going to work depending on the future. And just last point. Um, you brought you brought up about you know selling these uh, players a project. If I'm a young player, I'm not trusting anything that Man United say right now. I'd rather join after I see that you have proven it. But that's how so I, think no, about I, it. I do. I do get that. The only difference this time round is not the same people selling it. As I say, it isn't Ed Woodward and Richard Arnold saying we've changed. It's quite. It's, it's literally an under new management. So I think it's an easier sell. But that, that will and should be in the back of anyone's mind considering joining Man United that it hasn't worked before. But um, and, and how good they are at selling that point and how good they are at making changes. And I do feel that after this weekend, a lot of Man United fans will feel like, oh, fresh start. I really do think they're waiting for the end of the campaign. And I hope so as well. Uh, what, do you, what do you make of this, Henry, in, in terms of Elise and where he should go and, and where he'll end up? I personally think he should join Man United. I look at Chelsea have signed a number of players. 
done a billion in what three or four windows. Man United have got is it Jason Wilcox is the new director of football, and they've actually for the first time in probably twelve years got footballing people making footballing decisions now. Of course, I, I think Jaden Sancho will probably leave this window on, on their right hand side. I don't really or across their forward line. I don't think they've got a better forward than you know Lise. And he can kind of be like their first n- new signing. The statements, not st- is it a statement signing for Man United? Probably not, but he can be the first new signing under a new regime. Plus, Chelsea, if they do sign him, like Wall said, he, he operates the exact same areas. I know people can say Palmer can play in the 10, you know, and he has played in the 10, but I think he's better out on that right hand side. And if you're going to spend, I don't know what his release clause is, or he's still got a release clause, if you're going to do, say, 50 million on the exact same area, you've already got one of the best players. In, in the Premier League right now, I don't think it's I don't think it's smart business. Where Man United, however, their attacks a mess. You know, you've got Anthony probably will, will be going. You've got Rasmus Hoyland who they need another number nine. You need creativity going into that number nine, and you've got a player like Elisa. I think he got what nine, ten or nine goals in the league, and I think he only played eighteen games. I think he's nailed on to go Man United to be honest. But don't be surprised if other Premier League teams come in. I don't think. It would just be Man United and Chelsea. I think someone like Newcastle could come in. Yeah, I mean, they, they certainly could. Interesting comment here from Mo, one of our members. He says, Terry, Matt Law also said that Chelsea's board will demand Nkunku play at number 10, meaning if Palmer then has to play at right wing. And this is also the thing with Chelsea. We've seen the report state that they want to have be involved in on-field decision-making as well. And if they're pushing for these play, if they are genuinely going to say Nkunku's got to play when fit, and therefore Palmer's going on the right. I, again, this is, I, I wish I wasn't a Man United fan saying this, so I didn't seem biased. But if you're advising Elise and they're your choices, I mean, you might go with what we all said and you just say stay at Palace, but you're not going to pick Chelsea if you're not guaranteed to start. Because the last thing he needs at 22 years of age is to go to a club. And you've, got, you've also got Madueke, that again, all I've heard from a lot of Chelsea fans for the past six months is he's absolutely mustered. And if he's absolutely mustered, Where's Elise playing? One demon, remember? Elise is better than Madueke. Oh, I, I know he is. I'm, I think I'm most I think most Chelsea fans would comfortably say Elise is better than Madueke. I mean, the the Nkuku thing, I I don't know how true that is, but I I was going to say when Chelsea have played well this year, um, Madueke and Palmer have actually been playing in the same area. So if you were to like overlay Madueke and Palmer's heat map, even though they both play in the same, like they start at ten and right wing, they often like link up on the right side quite a lot. So yeah. I could see how that would work. But if nkuku has got to play 10, then he's got to play 10, then, you know, that spot's gone. So, okay. yeah, I hear, you, I hear you on that. Uh, Gal, welcome to the show, mate. I hope you're good, brother. Okay. Um, yeah, we're just talking about Elise and, the, and the, the, the sort of story that Fabrizio put out today that it's going to be Man United or it's going to be Chelsea. I mean, from an Arsenal fan's point of view, is he someone that you would have liked your club to have gone after? I don't think he's going to be joining any club to be like a backup where he's not... Or some, or some, somewhere where he's going to be squad depth. Personally, uh, I would love Elise, but I do see him starting wherever he goes, and I do think he's of that caliber where he could be starting for Manchester United or Chelsea. But why would he go to Chelsea right now, where they've signed like a hundred wingers in the last couple of seasons? All these wingers back out we, we, season after season. It seems like they signed two or three wingers. They signed that young kid for uh, the, last summer that they loaned out. But I forget his name. Uh, what, Mel- what's his name? What Diego uh, Moreira, the one that you saw that you sent to France to your, to your other club. D- yeah, Diego Moreira. Uh, and then you have Angel. What's his name? The we've, Angel got, we've got Angelo Diego Moreira, Kendry Pais, um, uh, now now say, William now William yeah, Escarpio as well. You They've have a whole eleven of wingers. It doesn't make sense yeah. for him to go to Chelsea. Simple as the Manchester United. He goes to Manchester United. Not only does he start, you could you could kind of. Put him. You can kind of tell him that, like, he will be taking the mantle as an English homegrown player, and he could be there for years. And maybe he has that connection to to Manchester United, as you guys were one of the more successful clubs while he was growing up as a youngster. So you never know. Maybe because he's a London boy, he might want to stay in London with Chelsea. That might be a thing. But if I, if it was strictly football decisions on the pitch, I think going to Chelsea would not make as much sense. I think for Man United as well, I, th- I think it depends on who our manager is. I, I get a feeling that if Elise is sitting there and we announce next, if we if we sack Ten Hag oh, on Terry. Sunday, hang on, what? 
Why does the manager matter if it's Chelsea? They're a merry-go-round worse than you. But, but, but what I'm about to tell you why it matters. I say we're, we're, we're not a merry-go-round anymore, though. From this summer, I'll be honest with you. I'm back in my club. From this summer, we're no longer a merry-go-round. It's a fresh start. It's a, it's a new club, as far as I'm concerned, after this FA Cup final, because it's a brand new bunch of people running it. Uh, although Dan Ashworth might be a bit delayed because he sent a silly email. But um, <laughs> other than, but we but then it goes to prove the point. They, I, I told everyone for months, not because I knew anything, but I understand how business works. They were already working. They've already been working, just not officially. But um, I think at least they should. I would still advise him to wait. If we bring in a manager that we will get a bit excited about, you know, some there's always going to be a question mark. But whether you know it could be a Deserby, it could be an Almerin. There's talk, t- t- talk of two call, cool, call cool, come. If we do announce on Monday afternoon that after the Euro, Southgate is becoming our manager, then I'll say at least they stay away. Even as a Man United fan, then I don't believe it's a new dawn for Man United. I changed my mind uh, a little bit. I've, I've been a bit facetious there. We have oh, a few... One thing, Terry, at least it could be you're like Cole Palmer. He could be that new, fresher breath air, that young player that comes into your team and invigorates the side because you don't have anybody like him in your, in your front three. Someone here said, wait. He's not going to the Euros, Terry. Did, did, did I say he was going to the Euros? Didn't no, think I, did. I don't know if you did, but I don't think England or France called him up. So I think no, uh, yeah, because he could pay for both. I mean, it's one of them ones. I look at Southgate and go, mate, just get him into a competitive game so he can't play for France. <laughs> Do it. Be smart about it. Uh, this year says, Jaws, my G, uh, but there's there's only so much more uh, you can do uh, to, to get more waves, man. It, it's all good. Uh, put... The comb down, uh, big up the man, then big up Tevin, man. <laughs> <laughs> Tevin's always on our case, I love it. Uh, United, also, yeah, this is true here. Um, at least they is a man United fan as well. They think, I think things do help. Uh, deserve your McKenna, and I'm happy with either of those choices coming into Man United. I really am for where we are and what we need to do. Um, big fan of Deserby and McKenna. I think there's a, there's a manager in there. Um, don't want Southgate though, don't want you Southgate. Although, you come in for Elise. If Who's Bernardo sorry? Silva goes Barca, which apparently they're back in for him, and do you think City could come in for him? City could, nah, City yeah. Have Savio course. coming in from Girona. Yeah, true, they true. They got yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, but aren't they, they going to loan him back to Girona or something? They were saying. No, nah, no. he's staying, bro. Savio's cold. No, that they, you got to understand. The whole City group of buying all these clubs is to do two things: to generate enough income so that City. Mm-hmm always had the most amount of money and they're going to create, they're basically going to create their own mini Bundesliga where all the clubs in their pyramid are, are set to push the players towards Man City. That's how it's all going to work. Kind of like what Red Bull have done with like Salzburg and Leipzig and... To a degree, but it'll be, this will be even more. And do you know what? Fair play. Like it's, it's no different to what used to happen before when club, Man United used to have feeder clubs. So clubs like Antwerp, Royal Antwerp, Sporting Lisbon, were Man United's feeder clubs. We got first dibs on players and preferential rates. On, on the signings. It, this it kind of used to exist before. It's just done in a slightly different, different way.